Okay, let's go ahead and do the fifth video lecture for Unit 1 in Business Statistics. In this video, we're going to talk about some data collection methods or data sources. And again, just very simply, just very quickly, very briefly. Entire classes could be devoted to any of this, as you've heard me say too many times in this unit. Uh, the four data collection methods that we're going to talk about, secondary analysis, surveys, what I call direct observation and counting, and the experimental method. Uh, secondary analysis, we're using data collected by others. There is a lot of data out there that is available for analysis that never really gets analysis, or never gets analyzed. There's economic and financial data from government agencies. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is a great source of information. Um, and it's not just for academic researchers where, where this would be useful data. Uh, businesses that were thinking about moving from uh, expanding their operations from one city to another city or from one state to another state could use these data for their analysis uh, to determine if that was a wise move, if it, was, if it made sense to move uh, your business from Tulsa and expand into the Dallas market, for example. Um, so secondary analysis is not just for academics. It can be, it can have uh, uh, real business applications. The Federal Reserve, of course, has uh, scads of data available for anybody. And because it is government data, it's, it's, it's available to any of us. Now there, there are some data there are some data held by government agencies that you may have to go through a process. You may have to request the data. You may have to fill out some forms. It's not going to be available online. Uh, but there's a lot of available data online. Uh, all you need to do is be able to download it into, a, into Excel. Uh, Bureau of Economic Analysis is another source for existing data. Uh, it could also be uh, data that's collected during normal business operations or normal business activities. It doesn't have to be uh, financial data even. It could be financial data. It could be human resources data. It could be safety data that's compiled during normal business activities. Once it's compiled, it's stored, then it would be available for analysis into the future if... Uh, if that analysis was was needed. Uh, I'll give you an example of this just very quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, just I just want to give you a taste of it. Uh, my first job as a safety manager, I went to a company that had uh, was having horrible problems, a lot of injuries, they were having fatalities, people dying in the workplace. One of the first things I did, I looked at company records and found data for the previous 20 years of that company's, uh, that company's history and their safety performance. I wanted, to, I wanted to see what kinds of injuries had occurred in the past, what the numbers were, and use that as a foundation for making decisions leading into the future, moving on into the future. Now once I did that first 20 year analysis, that time series analysis, I then continued each year adding, adding data to the analysis. And uh, it was interesting to see that after a few years, um, we started seeing the rates of injuries decrease substantially. We started to see the financial losses from injuries decrease substantially. But that was a secondary analysis. I didn't, I didn't create the data, I didn't collect the data, but the data was collected by that company's normal business activities. So if you go to a company, depending on, regardless of your discipline, uh, there may be existing data that you can use uh, as, as part of your, as part of your, uh, as part of your job. Another form of data collection, another source of data would be surveys. Uh, when existing data are not available, you may have to collect it. One way to do that is with a survey. With surveys, you're asking questions to your subjects. Now your subjects are not just individuals. It could be, it could be questions asked uh, 
at the company level. You can use a survey to find out information about companies, or you can use a survey to find out uh, information about individuals. And also, it's not just a written questionnaire. This is kind of misleading. It should, it should say using questions. But the questions can be administered in a, in a questionnaire. Uh, they could be administered in a face-to-face -face interview setting where you have an interviewer that goes in and asks a company representative questions about the company or the interviewer could sit down with each individual subject and ask them questions. So there's a lot of different ways to do surveys. It's not just a it's just not not just a pencil and paper questionnaire. And of course, a lot of the surveys that are done nowadays are are on the internet. There are a lot of internet surveys out there. Internet has made it easier to collect survey data. But there is a potential downside with internet surveys. It, it, it's so easy with SurveyMonkey and some of these different apps. It's resulted in a lot of what I call sloppy surveys that result in questionable data. So I don't know. I, I, if we use the internet to collect data for our business, uh, to answer our res business related research questions, we need to we need to be diligent in making sure that it's done correctly. Uh, we don't want to generate a sloppy survey and questionable data. Uh, we want accurate or as accurate as we can get data. We want ac data that gives us a true understanding and true answers to the questions that we're trying to answer. So be careful with the internet. Also be careful with any study that is based on internet surveys because you know, there, there can be multiple problems. And if this were a survey class, we would go more detail, go into more detail, talking about the pros and cons of the survey method and the pros and cons of using the internet. And, uh, and th this is a topic, by the way, that if you're at OSU, you can take a class just on sample survey de design or survey design, and that you really get into the nuts and bolts, into the meat of the of the subject. Uh, when you use focus groups, that's also a form of a survey. You'll oftentimes, when focus groups are, are being used, you will have, a, have a, a facilitator who is asking questions of the focus group. Now, it's not one person at a time, but you'll have five or six people ask, answering questions about a new product, perhaps. The facili fil facilitator could ask a question like, what do you think of Samsung's new television? And then the five or six people in the survey group can respond. Then the, the facilitator may have more specific questions about the product for the members of the focus group to respond to. Uh, focus groups can be useful, but they, they have their pros and cons as well. Uh, and so surveys, focus groups, another way of collecting data, obtaining data. Direct observation and counting. Observing behavior, activities within the business setting, and counting the number of instances the focus activity is observed. You're watching for focus behaviors, focus activities, and counting how often they occur. Uh, number of customers entering the business daily. Number of items sold. Number of unsafe behaviors. Number of shoplifting incidents dollar value of bank deposits. These are all simple examples, real easy examples to come up with because they're so obvious of, uh, of a counting approach to collecting data. You observe and you count instances of particular activities uh, appearing. Now, and with modern technology, it's much easier to collect these kinds of, of data. And one example of this modern technology is the point of sale technology and software that allows a business to count the number of items sold and track inventory in real time. Um, you know, Walmart, when they sell a, a dozen golf balls of a particular brand, that they know immediately that how many of those of that brand and of golf balls they've sold and they know how many are left in inventory. It's with that point-of-sale, real-time uh, technology 
it's uh, it's made it easier to accumulate data that and once accumulated once collected it can be the basis for analysis and there's some other examples of technology as well uh, that can be involved in uh, uh, this direct observation and counting method for collecting data experiments uh, procedure for making controlled observations they can they can take place in a natural setting or a laboratory setting and what we're doing in an experiment is artificially manipulating an independent variable to see how people or organizations will respond many many different variations in entire class on uh, on experimental design uh, this design could also use uh, the survey method and direct observation methods in the in the measurement strategy some examples experiment to determine if customer behavior is influenced by camera monitoring uh, you can mount cameras in one store to see if that affects customers behavior and then in another store let's say well, let's be more let me be more specific more precise here let's say we have two dollar general stores so in the one dollar general store you have cameras mounted and you have signs indicating that the customers are being observed on camera in another dollar general store you don't have the signs you don't have the cameras then you you observe to see if there are any differences in behavior among the customers in those two different in those two different uh, environments uh, the independent variable that we're manipulating there is the the presence of the camera or not having a camera in the in the space let's see another one product placement experiments uh, does a product sell better if it's on the third shelf or the top shelf? Uh, yeah, we know from past experiments, from research, that product placement that at eye level is the best product placement. That's where we want our products placed. And some businesses, some companies, will pay stores to make sure that their product is placed on those shelves that are at eye level whether it's the third shelf or the fourth sh fourth shelf uh, now the 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 more inexpensive items the generics they get to they tend to get placed on the lower shelves uh, while the name brands tend to get those prime shelf locations that are right in the the customer's line of sight but that was all established what we know about product placement and shelving that was all established with experimental research uh, a lot of the advertising uh, strategies that are commonly used that all goes back to experimental research experiments in a laboratory and or natural settings to see how different types of advertising campaigns affect consumer behaviors but again, yeah, I wish we could go into this in more detail because there's there's really a uh, it's a very interesting method that has a lot of potential uh, a lot of potential applications in different business disciplines but again we're just leading up to the statistical analysis part of the class here by talking a little bit about collecting data all right that's it for this video that was a short one less than 16 minutes uh, we'll come back here in a little bit, and I will finish up by talking about ethics and data analytics. We'll talk about both of those topics in the last video, which also should be pretty short.